some magic somehow. Sounds but, fun. Uh, <laughs> we are back live here on our world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio broadcast. You can find us on Periscope and, of course, uh, Facebook Live, iHeartRadio, and 50 plus AM FM stations across the country and around the world. And I have got a fabulous guest with us today. Ralph Sutton is with us. He joins us on the old Skip Skype, the old Skype Rooney. And uh, Ralph is a longtime veteran of television and radio. He's got a uh, built in international following. And, uh, how are you, sir? I'm okay. Is that what they, they send you? It says That's what they sent me. What you a have crappy a... intro that is. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to somebody about that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 you'll have to, uh, have, have to find somebody and we'll have to, uh, you know, s- send out a press release or something. I, I don't know. Hell, hell will be raised, Jiggy. There we go. <laughs> So uh, you have been doing radio and TV and everything for a heck of a long time. Uh, yeah. Talk Can to I me. Quit a... saying, it's a very nice way of saying I'm old. Thank uh, you. No. <laughs> How did you get into the business, my friend? You know, it's great uh, story. Is that I? Well, I, I didn't start here, but I, for one point, I used to run rock clubs in New York. I started running. I was running dance clubs and rock clubs, but then um, I was a DJ at a strip club in New. Fantastic. Jersey. Yeah, I worked at a lot of the big ones over the years, but I was in, in Jersey at the time, and a guy was on the air, was was on before me, he worked 12 to 7, and I worked 7 to close, and I could just tell he had a great voice, and he really had a good command of the room, but he didn't know what he was doing as a strip club DJ, so I asked him, <laughs> what's the story here, and he was a radio guy that just was doing this part time, <laughs> and I said, I'll make you a deal, you get me an interview there, and I'll show you how to do this, and <laughs> And then him and I ended up working together for almost like five years. We That's where I started my radio career. Um, I did overnights for a while at a little yep. station in Jersey, but then started a, a syndicated rock radio show called The Tour Bus. Yes, that indeed. That got to about 100 stations, and I did that most of my adult life until I started my podcast. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I remember uh, running uh, The Tour Bus on uh, a station in Salina, Kansas, 92.7 oh, The Zoo. I remember Zoo. that. <laughs> That's cool. You know, what's funny about that is that <laughs> I always thought it was Selena, and then someone, and I, I know this is radio, so I don't want to curse, oh, yeah. but can you say the uh, the uh, female anatomy that starts with V? Are you allowed to say that word? Oh, yes, yes, because we, because okay. that's, that's all, we, you know, w- one of the things about, about Kansas, of course, um, I'm originally from McPherson, Kansas, and everybody calls it McPherson, and mm-hmm. so the big gimmick when I was growing up was there's no fear in McPherson. And okay, in Salina, you. we used to have these, uh, you know, bands come through, and, and I used to do this thing uh, called Jiggy Jag TV out at a, uh, a local rock club called the Blue Goat, of all places. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know why it was called the Blue Goat, but uh, the Blue Goat, and we would have bands come through, and they would always say Salina. And there right. was one day they said, no, 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 it's Salina, like vagina. Right. And, that's and so everyone it. was like, oh, okay. Yeah, the first time you guys came on as a spawn as a as a syndicated affiliate, I would I kept saying it's Selena, and then I got a bunch of emails that said, "No, idiot, it's Selena like vagina," and I never forgot it after that. That is fantastic. We've got Ralph Sutton with us today. Uh, of course, you've got all sorts of things uh, going on, and uh, talk to me about your latest project that you're involved in. Well, I mean, there's a few. You know, it's it's amazing how the world has changed for me. Radio was my dream, and there's nothing like what you're doing. Live radio, yes. to me, is the art form that I miss the most. No matter what yes. part of my career, the no, I don't know if you have a delay here, but the no delay live radio I used to do, that energy, like if the band doesn't show up at the time they're supposed to be in studio, we're screwed the rest of That's the That's right. <laughs> you, you, you've got to, as the great Tom Likas used to say, you've got to vamp. Yeah, and not only that, the idea that, you know, a show that starts at 8 and ends at 10 or whatever, the, who cares? But that top of the hour, you had five seconds to hit that's that right. idea, that top of the ID. And when you're syndicated across the country at the time and live everywhere, one screw-up screwed up everybody. Yes. So that was really, that energy was nuts. But for me personally, the money started to dwindle. And even though we were still on a bunch of stations, yeah. syndicated radio was dying because the yes. only thing that survives is what you're doing. Live and local is yep. what's going to make radio survive. 
Yes. So I started a, a, a podcast about five years ago called the SDR Show, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. Although awesome. now we're saying it stands for social distancing required, but <laughs> it's SDR Show, right? And I started that as a joke saying, imagine a thousand people would listen to me. How great would that be? Um, and now here we are five years later, it's about 100,000 listeners or more. And it led to me starting a network called Gas Digital. And Gas Digital now has 22 shows. I think it's four or five million listeners a week. Uh, we have people wow. like, um, if you're a, Met, a rock fan, Jamie Josta from Hate Breed, um, Rob Flynn from, um, sorry, H Rob Flynn from Hate Breed, Jamie Josta, I'm screwing it up. Let's start that <laughs> Jamie Josta from Hate Breed, Rob Flynn from Machine Head are both have shows on the network. Yes. Michael Bisping from the UFC is on the network. That's awesome. And then a bunch of great comedians, a great, it's just a really cool energy, a lot of great shows, and my show's one of them. And collectively, it's built into this monstrosity that is Gas Digital Network that we have 22 shows that are all happening, you know, there's shows happening every single day. Fantastic. Well, I may need to talk to you about seeing what we can do about getting getting a show on there. Who knows? Sure. Uh, so, so you before you did, uh, or, or besides doing the radio and the podcast, um, you hosted rock events across the country. Still do some of them. I don't do as many now because I'm old, you know, and <laughs> I turn them down because my I, this sounds. I the way I look at it is this: like there's one that I host every year for 11 years called Ship Rocked, yes, uh, which is rock cruise. The M3 Rock Festival, the um, the uh, what you call the the big motorcycle rally, oh Sturgis, yeah, yeah, a bunch of others. But as I got older and I was doing some of them for five years, six years, seven years, I said, "There's some 22 year old kid that would give his left arm to be the host." Oh, you better believe it. So, and I'm doing it almost out of like, "All right, here we go again." So I said, I decided to like cut down the things that I'm doing to let you know to kind of keep that rock torch going and nobody would see a 50 year old dude on stage like bring some young hungry kid out there so i kind of dwindled off a lot of them but i still love ship rock they took one year off ship rock but i think i'm going to go back next year you're the only you know we need to put you in a museum uh next next to the chick that doesn't give blow jobs because <laughs> you you're you're one of the very few radio guys who went you know i'm old I need to figure something else out. There are right. so many radio the ga radio guys, and, and you've got a list. I've got a list. Everybody that's listening's got a list. They will never give up that spot. Yeah, I just felt <laughs> like will never also, give that spot know, up. I feel it's an, it does a disservice to the fan base if you're going well, there that too. As, as opposed to going there and being like, oh my god, I can't believe uh, the, being that id, you know that that id yes. inside everybody, like. Holy crap, look at what's happening right now. I get to enjoy this as much as you. The days I stopped sitting front row and center after I went on stage to watch the bands, like realized, oh wow, I don't care anymore. This is not a good thing. You know? <laughs> that's so that's right. when I started looking to and also by the way, a very funny story, Jake, is that when I was doing the M3 Rock Fest and I had my radio show tour bus, the first couple of years I was there in that backstage radio tent area where they put you oh, the yeah. closer onto the stage, the more important you are. You know, so <laughs> yes. it was that local rock station in position one, and my show was almost always in position two, and then there'd be a bunch of other things. Yes. By year four or five, I was the last one on the road because nobody cared about syndicated radio anymore, yep. and positions two and three were all online music zines and podcasts. And like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I need to figure this out. <laughs> The one thing I think is so great about, uh, by the way, we're speaking with a great guest today. Uh, Ralph Sutton is with us. He's a longtime veteran of television and radio. Uh, he hosted uh, the Tour Bus, a nationally broadcast rock radio program. It was syndicated in 50 markets. Uh, he has got all sorts of different things he's doing now. You know that, that the ship rocked uh, MC duties. Uh, I had a photographer years and years ago. Uh, who went to several of these events. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Michael Nagy just absolutely loved Ship Rocked. And uh, he, he would always tell me, oh, man, you got you to gotta go, go to Ship Rock sometime. You know, he's just like just like this rabid, you know, uh, the, the, in, in wrestling, they call him wrestling marks. He was a rock and roll mark. <laughs> he just, but, uh, but, Ralph, one of the things that you hit on there, uh, with the fact that you were positioned, you know, one or two, and then you were at the back of the line. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Radio, and and I notice this a lot with radio, 
I don't really notice this a lot with TV, but uh, the radio things, it's an odd deal because like with PR people, when I talk to PR people, they love the fact we're on iHeart. They love the fact that it's a syndicated show and we're on all these, you know, little AM, FM stations across the country. And I had to get used to knowing when to tell people certain things because like if I talk to some PR people in the music industry, you know, I'm trying to get an interview with whoever. They love the fact we're on iHeart. But then I talk to some radio people, and they love the fact we're a podcast, too. And right. I'm like, <laughs> they just don't understand. It's crazy. And funny, the, the thing that I do is that depending on who I talk to, my podcast is either called the SDR Show, which sounds politically correct, or the Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Show. That's so right. Who I'm pitching it to. And then if they ask, I'll tell them. Yes. But, you know, for... In general, let them do their homework. It's not my job to do your homework if you didn't look it up. You know? That's right. But in general, it's true. Like I remember that feeling of when I the, the station that was my um, flagship for a tour bus for many, many years was yes. called uh, WDHA in, 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 in uh, New Jersey. Yes. And they were the rock station of Jersey. Mm -hmm. The first time I walked into that studio, and those first few years, too, the awe I would feel like, oh, my God, I'm in these studios, these radio studios. Like It meant so much to oh, me. Oh, yes. <laughs> and my original feeling, I was, my co-host for SDR is a really funny comedian, Big Jay Okerson. Oh, he's yes, really Big Jay. Right? He's fantastic. And he pitched the idea of us doing a podcast together on Shiprock because we were posting events together. And yeah. I actually got him on Shiprock because they needed a rock comic. And I knew him and booked him on the show, on the tour, on the cruise. But my first response to him six years ago was, dude, um, podcasting is for people that can't do radio. I'm doing radio. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast, right yeah and then a year later the next ship rocked i said dude i've been hearing about like guys like joe rogan and mark Marin uh -huh. and, and all this stuff and you know what f it let's do a podcast together and the name of the show the logo the url i had it all already because i was going to do a morning radio show seven eight years ago called sdr show and my idea was i'm going to go out at night and party in new york city and whoever's with me at 6 in the morning is coming on the show with me. That is fantastic. And I, I could do this for a year, <laughs> maybe two, but it would be a crazy, crazy time. Oh, it would be the craziest thing. But yes. The time they, they told me the money. I was like, ah, it's not enough for me to, like, totally ruin my life for two years. It just that didn't too. work for me. But I kept everything on my hard drive, the imaging, the, the, the bumper. I had everything ready to go. <laughs> so then when, Jay said, what do we call it? I sent him like a complete We're package. ready to go, baby. Yeah. He's like, well, let's do it. And that's how we started the show. <laughs> yes, because radio people, it used to be, you know, Opie and Anthony and Howard Stern and all these guys used to be like, oh, nobody's going to do podcasts. Nobody's going to do this internet radio stuff. Oh, that's all for the guys who can't hack it. Right. And, then the, and then the radio business fell apart. And Tom Likas... Uh, all of a sudden became an internet sensation. And Opie and Anthony, uh, uh, hell, Anthony Cumia is built like an entire studio somewhere. Joe Rogan's yeah, yeah. got, you know, that giant monstrosity thing that he's got out there in L.A. Uh, mm -hmm. th there's all sorts of things going on. So now all of a sudden, well, we've all changed it. And now yeah. all the radio guys are here and the future is now. And... <laughs> But the funny thing is this, I'll tell you this, which is beautiful for you and I, is that most of these uh, networks and most of these people, they don't understand the platform of audio entertainment. Yes. Right? So maybe yes. they're very funny or whatever, but they don't understand what a TSL is or how to keep those numbers up or anything like that. So you go in and you're ahead of the game. So like even yes. the best example I could give you is last couple of months ago, I was in L.A. and through a friend of a friend... I went into Joe Rogan Studios to help them wire some audio equipment because they didn't know how to do <laughs> they it. They didn't know how to do it, no. Nope. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that years of doing live radio. Well, like, there were times where I'm swapping out pots live on air in between because something went down and we're, we're unplugging and pulling things back and forth. The wiring and the live stress that you and I are accustomed to yes. would break a podcaster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> these 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 guys they uh well that that's like you know the, the things that i always uh one, one of my great friends in in internet radio and podcasting is frank catolo who used to be mars catolo on the wolfman jack program oh wow <laughs> and frank basically started the very first internet radio talk show 
And Ooh. he started doing Skype calls and all these different things. And when Mark Marin came along, it just made him so angry because yeah. Marin gets all this accolades. Oh, my God, Mark Marin's doing all these amazing things. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank's like, I did it in the early 90s. <laughs> That's crazy. That's really funny. I never heard that. That's really cool. And also, what's interesting, again, with you and I, like I talk to podcasters, and they do so much post-production editing. Oh, yes. I'm like, why? Like, why do you? you doing, just do it. See, that's always – well, that, that's like Frank's thing. Frank has always done a live show Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's it, it, that's what he does. He does his show, and then at the end of it, he uploads it. Mm -hmm. And it's like all these – I see all these videos, or I see like this Todd Cochran who started this thing called Blueberry years and years ago. He's like Mr. Podcast, and they always talk about all this editing. And yeah, I'm like, what crazy. are you doing with all this editing? So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so I glad to hear someone like you. <laughs> a real radio person come in and say what are you doing with all this editing and post-production there's one guy was talking to who takes out all the breaths i'm like what? oh so yeah you, that... you have a, a 60 minute a capacity in your voice <laughs> i you know when when i first started there at 92.7 way back in the day uh, one of our program director, Brother Ken at the time, uh, used to always, you know, he, when he showed me how to use Cool Edit, he's mm -hmm. like, you got to go through and you got to do the ad, then you got to take all the breaths out. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool for production purposes. Yeah. And then all these guys now are taking the breaths out on their podcast. I'm like, what are you doing, boys? It's insane. I love, by the way, that you were the board op for my show 100 years yes, ago. Yes, I fun. think that is amazing. Did you did you know that going into this interview or no? No, I did oh, not. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> when, you're, when, when your press person got a hold of me, she's like, I got all these people, and she starts sending me all this stuff, and I start looking through things. And I've had so many guests today because, of course, I'm I'm busier now <laughs> than I was because everybody's home. <laughs> right. Oh, for sure. So <laughs> we're doing all these interviews. And so I was thumbing through your stuff here, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's awesome. So what, what, the, um, what the concept of, you know, the SDR show mm -hmm. uh, and building this network – Talk to me about that process, because I know all sorts of different people who have tried this in the past where they're like, well, I've, I've got a show and I've got five or six guys that I know. We're going to put a network together and then it never goes anywhere. Well, I think that the again, not to keep touting my past, but what made the difference was doing syndicated radio, having a show on 70, 80 stations yes. is basically the same methodology of having 20 shows on one network. It's really it's just the reverse of the same model, you know, so. Yeah. I understood how to figure out our audience, how to part monies based on where they were coming from and things like that. As when we first started, I was on a network called All Things Comedy, which is a great comedy network. Yes. But they had no ad infrastructure. And at the oh, time, yeah. I did both radio and my podcast for like two years and then let the our radio show go about a year and a half, two years ago. But I said to them, hey, look, my ad sales team for radio could sell the network easily and everybody can make money. And their response was, well, we wouldn't know how to figure out how to disperse the money, so we, I'd rather not do it. I'm like, you're saying no to – it's an Excel sheet. I'll show you how to do it. You know, <laughs> I want to do it. So having those, those concepts already baked into my brain made it a lot easier. Same thing with our ad sales department. Most ad sales people are older. They're from the old radio oh, days. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> so I know how to train people to talk to those people – and make them understand podcasting, if that makes any sense. So it was easier leap for us to do it because of that. The one thing I, I always liked when uh, Lycus started doing his show is he went out and printed, and I even stole this concept because it was genius. He uh, would print business cards, and on the business and on the back of the business card, he would teach you how to download the TuneIn app oh, that's <laughs> and great. find that's his really show. Cool. And he was always like, you know, listeners, whatever. He goes, I've got this on our website. Just go print them and yeah, just that, go hand funny. them to people. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big, also like a big fan. I tell people all the time, social symmetry, you know, so you should have the same handle on all the platforms. Oh, yes. Uh, one yeah. of one of my, I, I, I guess I'll, I'll say somebody that I've been uh, 
you know, uh, tutoring over the years. He's, he's uh, Mr. Andrew Duncan. Uh, mm-hmm. Years and years ago, he decided, well, he couldn't find Andrew Duncan this or Andrew Duncan that, so he just changed his whole thing to Drew Duncan. And okay. there was one day uh, I, had, I had hooked him up with an ESPN affiliate somewhere, and he was doing afternoon radio, and, of course, that didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> He's 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 found more success doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that he has. But that was his thing was he would get on and he would say Drew Duncan across all Facebook, Twitter, you know, all that. And he was always Drew Duncan. Right. And so, yeah, you've hit that on the head. None of this well, underscore. None of this. <laughs> and even even if, even if it's underscore Drew Duncan, then be underscore Drew Duncan everywhere. But I yes. still you could if you can't come up with like me I, I am Ralph Sutton that's mine at I am Ralph Sutton yes and I Ralph Sutton.com because I couldn't get uh Ralph Sutton it was taken right when I first yes. started looking so then the the SDR show sure it would have been cool if it was sex drugs and rock and roll but that was taken <laughs> so the SDR show we took that you know so just yes. a matter of figure it out there's there's a website called like name check and you just type in you what you're looking for and it will show you which platform that's on and when you get that combination that's available everywhere, that's the one you take. Fantastic. You know, I, I um, what was it? Uh, probably about a month ago, uh, Joe Rogan had someone on his podcast, and they were talking about radio. And they're like, mm-hmm. you're still doing radio? <laughs> and <laughs> and, and w- one of my uh, heroes, uh, although I listened to his show the other day for the first time in a while, and I'm like, Oh my God! He's still doing the same shtick he was doing years ago. Man cow out of Chicago. Oh, yeah, I know man cow. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still doing the same thing. And right. I'm like, it's, Oh my God! Really? <laughs> radio is owned by older people that are out of touch. Like I remember, uh, boy, I don't mean to crap on radio so much, but as I no, I mean no, it, I do so, that all the time here. But like so. <laughs> If you do remember when they tried, when, when iPods first came out, yes, and everybody could put thousands of songs on their uh, devices before it was integrated into a phone, Yep, radio started panicking. So they made this idiotic format called the Jack. Oh, the Jack uh, was, you know what's funny is uh, <laughs> here, here's, here's more craziness from my past, but uh, 92.7 The Zoo, uh, which had your show, uh, mm. the tour bus, um, at one point, they did the Arbitron ratings for the first time in that area of Kansas. And 92.7 The Zoo, number one with a bullet. We were the number one rock station. We were the number one radio station. A month later, the owners came in and said, we're getting rid of this format. We're going to sports. Oh, and <laughs> they shifted Brother Ken and myself to a ill-conceived morning show on a Jack FM station. So ridiculous. And this yeah. Jack FM, we we had a we had a Bob format, and previous and the Bob format on this one station on this ninety five five station, what they had turned the imaging into, and they always used to get really mad when I, when I when I called him this, but they made Bob out to be sort of like a mentally handicapped kid. <laughs> they hated that. They hated the way I used that term. But it was always, you know, Bob likes butterflies, Bob FM, or Bob Bob sees you out the window, hi, Bob FM. And it was, he was such a cute little guy. We had little kids come down to the station, want to meet Bob. Oh, boy. And there was all these things. Well, then they decided they were going to switch to Jack. I'm assuming it was a cheaper format. Right. <laughs> Somebody in the higher ups at like a Clear Channel or a Beasley or whatever yes. decided going to put a bunch of money into this format and all of a sudden this jack fm and i don't know if it was just our imaging or if it's just the way jack was jack fm went from being the nice little retarded boy to the redneck trailer guy it was we don't care what what you want to hear this jack fm and, and, and they're like you know we're in the trailer park yeah, bam, bam. and i'm like I don't have any interest in this. <laughs> right. it was horrible. And it also, I remember them saying, it's like listening to your iPod. I'm like, no, it's not. My iPod has my music on it. It's like listening oh. to your iPod, you idiot. And, of course, it failed miserably because yes. it's like, instead of trying to program against technology, radio needs to program to what their strengths are, which is live, local, yes. entertainment. Get yes. someone who really has a connection to that neighborhood because podcasting can't do that. Web no. radio can't do that. Live and local where you know the local bands, you know the local restaurants, yes. you know the local 
Exactly. And that's what you talk about. And you'll be number one in your market. Who cares if someone in Iowa doesn't listen to someone in Kansas or whatever it is? <laughs> if you're if you're connecting to your market, that's all that matters. You know what's funny about this? We've got Ralph Sutton with us today. Of course, he is a longtime veteran of television and radio. He has got, a, a, as, as his press person says, his own built-in international fan base. Uh, <laughs> he hosted for many years the tour bus. A uh, nationally rock radio show it was syndicated in 50 markets across the nation and rebroadcast worldwide on the internet. And uh, he currently hosts the SDR show with Big J Okerson, which, by the way, is fantastic. Big J is uh, really pretty cool. damn amazing. And uh, it, it's been the number one spot on comedy in iTunes. And uh, he's gotten the uh, top 20 iTunes comedy as well. Uh, just amazing things. But, Ralph, one of the things that I've heard on radio, and I always, whenever I hear these things on local radio, I'm always like, oh, local radio's not doing itself any favors. <laughs> I heard a guy the other day on a station uh, in Wichita called T95. They're supposedly a rock station. They, okay. they don't play a lot of rock, but uh, they're, they're a rock station. And uh, he kept talking about how he wanted someone to go to their website and look up his Spotify playlist. Okay. And I'm like, what are you doing? That's Why are you driving, sending people to Spotify? That's really funny. He's driving traffic away from his radio <laughs> station. That's really cool. I like that. You know, I, I just find that so strange because I'm like, once I go to Spotify, why would I go back to 95? Yeah, once you realize, you know, but it's funny. Again, it's just stick with what makes you great. Not only that, like, you know, they did a survey just a few years ago. The most owned appliance on the planet is a radio. Yes. Everybody has a couple of radios. Everybody's got a radio. <laughs> yeah, so why would you not cater to that audience? I don't know. It just, well, that's it like... Me because I love this platform so much, but it just, for me, personally, it wasn't making me, it wasn't paying the bills anymore. Lycus used to say that he has no problem with the appliance. He loves radio. He just can't stand the radio business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things I find so strange about radio also, uh, I always love talking radio with radio people, especially people like Ralph, who uh, understands the business and isn't just going to be telling me uh, hyper-local and all this other nonsense and giving me all these buzz terms like morning mayor. And uh, well, what are some of the other radio terms that uh, uh, live and local? Um, TSL is my favorite because uh, – that really is, that means a lot. It does mean a lot. The, the idea of how long the time someone spends listening, I think, is, that, is a great idea. And the thing that yes. I, I took, embraced was that when they we did a metric on that once for my show, and we had the highest TSL. We, most people that were listening to SDR made it through 85% of it, at least. And that's incredible. You know, that's Look at that. Wow. That's it made, it's amazing. It's like something like 90% of them listened to 85% of it or more, which is unbelievable. <laughs> this is awesome. Look at that. I like the fact that you've got a sales team. You study metrics. You've yeah. got all these things. This is the one thing that radio has always missed. They're yeah, because we can get um, real metrics. You know, yes. when you log into your back end, you could see not only how many listens. Like, we just did with, with radio was dumb. For a while, it was journals, which was the idiot. Oh, uh, the, the, the journals program. or the yeah. uh, coverage it's maps. Years. Yeah, it was all so stupid. Like, a journal, I'm going to say that I listen to classical music all day because i want to sound smart or whatever it is or for the dollar or five dollars they were giving you for filling out a journal for two weeks what are you going to get you're not going to get some billionaire to do it it's just going to be people who need the five dollars <laughs> it's a dumb, dumb setup but uh with podcasting you can see not only how long they're listening but where they're listening from what states you can't drill down a city but you can drill down a state and then if you bring in youtube you start getting male and female yes. demographic you could really get a real audience. And see, and thing. this is the thing that, that we years ago started doing, and I got a lot of people either that were in radio or not in radio that told me how much of an idiot I was, but uh, which, is, which is fine. I've been told that by radio people and TV people forever. But uh, we, would, we would do our podcast. We would uh, stream the show live off our website. We had a, I had a Twitch channel. We were, we're on Facebook. We're on Periscope. We're... Anywhere that you can be, I want to be there. Right, exactly. You want to be where they're looking for you. It was a famous yes. David Lee Roth quote. I know my my the Van Halen record is going to be in New York, but I want it to be in Snohomish, uh, Washington. 
You know, then you know that any kid that's going to look for it is going to find it, yes. and that's to have a platinum record. The, the one thing, like you were mentioning, er, well, we were talking earlier about the guy sending people to Spotify. Uh, mm -hmm. Another one of the things that I've loved about radio over the years is the fact that the radio owners, they, they're not really paying too much attention <laughs> to sure. things. So you get like uh, Alex Jones will get on the air, and he'll be like, Infowars.com, Infowars.com. And then you have, you know, Rush Limbaugh was talking about, well, you know, if you want commercial-free ditto cam, you can go to RushLimbaugh.com. And I started listening to all this, and I thought, you know, these guys are geniuses because they're sending their audiences to the website. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, that's, by the way, that's why I did my radio show for two more years was because all I did every episode was talk about my podcast. <laughs> It's it's great, and they're not paying attention because no, yeah, they like don't. Any, the... any uh, if you were a manager of any station, like now, DHA, which is I, I still have friends that work there, they told them that they would get fired if they talked about a podcast on the air. Oh yeah, yeah, I've 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 heard folks that have seen those memos as well. <laughs> well again, I don't know. Like you, there you can argue both sides of that coin, but I still I understand radio right now. It's a, just a different animal. It's just, a, you know, you have to figure out how to work within the, the confines of being 2020. It's not, you know, it's not 1997 anymore. So you got to figure it out. Well, I have noticed that uh, radio people, especially like news directors and things, they, uh, they still want, like, I'll apply for news director jobs every once in a while just to see what, what kind of craziness is going on out, out there. And they'll tell me, well, I want to see some of your writing. And I'm like... Okay, you do know we're on the radio, and we have the ability to do Periscope and Facebook Live, and I could report from the scene. But what were they writing? What? What were they asking you to write? News like writing a, for their uh, website. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's also though indicative of the times because I remember when I was at DHA, there was a program director, an assistant program director, a music director, and an assistant music director, and. Then, <laughs> As you get on and you realize <laughs> half those jobs mean nothing, yes. you know, there's one guy that's the program director, music director, and afternoon drive guy because there's no, there's not that kind of money anymore. My my favorite is the uh, the people that will uh, like th there are, there are certain radio groups like uh, iHeartRadio is is real big on this. They'll have these these help wanted ads and they want you to go to their job bank, and I'm like, okay, you want me to fill out all this stuff, upload all this stuff. Does anybody ever see those? <laughs> no, good question. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> or my favorite is uh, every year we go out and interview the adult film stars out at the uh, the the porn expo in Las Vegas every mm -hmm. January. I'm sure that's, and... that's really difficult to go to. <laughs> <laughs> and on the way out there every year, I always will see like radio ads or things, or you know, people need this or need that, so I'll send them something. And they'll be like, well, when you're in town, could you come by and pick up a paper application? I'm like, what? We're still doing that in 2020? That's yeah, really funny. <laughs> it's so antiquated. It's hilarious. <laughs> it really is. You so, know what's funny? Um, yes. When, SD, when Tour Bus first started, we signed a syndication deal. And this is in 1999. Yes. Okay? And I thought, oh, you sign a syndication deal, you are a millionaire. That's just what happens. You know, like, <laughs> yes. I because you think of Rush and Hannity and all these guys. Yeah, or Stern or whatever. Right, yeah. That's it. I just signed this deal, and then money just starts coming. And it took me three or four months to realize, oh, we are syndicatable, but we're not syndicated. <laughs> so we have the ability for people to take our show, but no one's taking the show because why would they? Who the hell knows who I am, right? So the first three months, nothing happens. And then one day I said to my old uh, co-host, here's what we're doing. The show ends Saturday night at midnight. We are getting in your truck. We are driving to Miami. On the way down, we're just going to keep turning radio stations to find anybody playing the kind of music we play. Guns N' Roses, ACDC, Motley Crue, Van Allen. That's... And we'll make a list of those stations. Yeah. We get to Miami. We took a crappy hotel. We just started making phone calls, made 12 meetings, drove back up the East Coast, came back with five affiliates in one week, and then got back in time to do the show that Saturday night a week later. Look I called my that. I said, how did I sign five stations in a week when I don't know what the hell I'm doing and you've got nothing for three months? That's awesome. <laughs>
Well, I'll tell you, it's because you're a workhorse, brother. I tried. <laughs> so well, what do you make of the fact that uh, – rock stations and classic rock stations and we we're off we're now referring to Huey Lewis and the news as classic rock and classic hits and all this all these formats yeah I mean eventually you knew like when I was I mean that was the basis the original name of the tour bus was modern classics okay so yes crappy. but the concept <laughs> was when I was a kid classic rock was Led Zeppelin and the Beatles yes and now I'm an adult and classic rock is still Led Zeppelin and the Beatles. And the Beatles. It makes no sense. So I said, we need to, everything needs to shift one. Everything needs to, now it's 20 <laughs> years later, and you're still considering Led Zeppelin classic rock, but Guns N' Roses is not getting any airplay. And that was the concept of the show originally, so it's the modern classics. It's the classics for the next generation. And how I figured that whole thing out, that people were missing that, yes. was as though the DJ in a strip club, I'd throw on Guns N' Roses, and the place would go crazy, because this is before the internet, before Spotify, you couldn't hear those CDs anywhere. If you didn't own it, it wasn't coming on the radio. There was nowhere to hear it. And that was how we started the show. And that was the, 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 the tagline to my packet that I presented to the station was, how many times can you hear Stairway to Heaven and not want to blow your brains out? And that's the start. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so w w with you being in... in all facets of radio and have, have done all the different things you've done. What do you make of the success of some of these shows like Alice Cooper and Dee Snyder? It to me, well, <laughs> Dee is a friend, you know, but uh, what it is is because originally Dee Snyder tried to be tried to tried to do morning radio, and everybody's like, I don't want to hear that crap. And, and then he he's for a while. Uh, yeah. yeah. But what I think is this is that those shows, even though I think Nikki Six gave up his show. Is that right? I forget. Yes, I, I think so. Yeah. They are all owned by the corporations of course right that own the radio stations <laughs> and course. it's just they're double dipping so they're making money on the radio station and then they're getting the syndication money from the syndicated show so they're making both advertising money they can pull it on both sides my show was the the, the most successful independently owned show we weren't only on clear channel or beasley or cumulus yeah, yeah. we had a couple of affiliates from all the different ones because we were independent and we didn't have to just be like when I worked at a state, when our show, one of the things that hurt uh, Torbus a lot was when Nikki Six's show came out, show, stations were being forced to take that show. Oh, wow. And they were like, we don't even, we don't want it, but we have no choice. So we got to let you go. And that's how we lost a lot of affiliates that way. So they're most of these, if you look at the own, like even D's show is owned by, I think by, by uh, Premier or whatever. Yes, one of those I think so. I think so. I think it's a, uh, a a premier radio property, right? And he, <laughs> he gets paid a, a salary to be the voice, you know, yep. a little more or less, depending on how many stations it's on. But we we were a different animal. You know, what's funny is when we first started, we were on a small station called WNNJ that no one ever heard of, it was in, in uh, like South Jersey. And good luck getting interviews from anybody important because we were on ten to midnight on a Sunday, just in one station. Nobody cared, right? Fair enough. Nobody cares. So I found uh, a store in, in uh, New York that had 20 great interview CDs from famous rock stars. Guns wow. N' Roses, Van Halen, Motley Crue, whatever. Just got lucky, bought them all, isolated <laughs> the answers, and then just <laughs> asked, asked the oh. question. And so my, for 20 weeks, we had the best guests in the world. Like, <laughs> how the hell is this station getting Ax Axl Rose? <laughs> <laughs> I did that one time when I filled in for uh, Brother Ken on, on 92.7 The Zoo and uh, doing the morning show one time when he decided, ah, I'm not coming to work. <laughs> he called me at 5, and he's like, and at the time I was, they wouldn't let me be Jiggy because I had created Jiggy. I had to be Crash Davis, but okay. uh, <laughs> which I turned Crash Davis into a really bad Grease Man impression. I don't know if you remember the Grease Man from... <laughs> I was always like, Linga Langa <laughs> and, <all laughs> and uh we had this premier radio prep and they did this they had these interview things mm -hmm. where you could download yeah, like William Shatner. Talking. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did that one day and I was like, I'll do this William Shatner thing. And so I downloaded the audio, did all that, and then I would post the stuff on my personal website later because Brother Ken was like, I don't care what you do with your jiggy stuff. I don't care. Mm -hmm. So 
then I got a hold of an agent one time, and I said, hey, I want to interview Dean Koontz. And they're like, well, because he had a book tour or something. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, who have you done? And I said, William Shatner. And <laughs> I yeah. sent him the clip, yeah. and they are like, let's do it. <laughs> That's also the sad thing that you realize is that every publicist says, well, who else have you been on? It's like, no, you know what? How about you just judge me on my own merits? That you know, too. That too. It's so frustrating. So like we on SDR, <laughs> when we got Mark Cuban to come in studio yes. right, and spend an hour with us and, and he was cursing and he said, um, F Richard Branson. It was a really great, it was really funny. It was great interview. <laughs> super nice guy. But then all I did was take the picture of me and Mark Cuban and I sent it to everybody that said no to me that year and said, if it's good enough for Cubes, it should be good enough for you. That's and awesome. The, the amount of people that said, you know what, you're right, and they rescheduled and came back in and did the show. But that shouldn't have to happen. No. It should, <laughs> I listen to your show, you're funny or you're good. Yes. Let's do it. Yeah. We we do a lot of uh, political stuff, and I'll have the you know some some of the wackiest, craziest you know political people on, but I get a lot of people based upon the fact that we had we had like Dr. Jerome Corsi on, and they're like, oh that guy, okay I'll come on. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be that way. It bothers me that it's that. I understand it because especially in this landscape where there's a million shows now, you know everybody has a podcast. Oh yeah, or everybody or whatever. So I understand it, but it should just be, how many listeners do you have? Okay, let me hear five minutes. Okay, I'll do it. That's what it should be, but that's just, you know, I'm dreaming that that would happen, but it would make my life so much easier instead of having to, like, really sugarcoat it, show them, oh, you know, we had Papa Roach come in, we had Mark Cuban come in, we had this one being Cook, and blah, 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 and then then finally get someone to say yes. Yeah. Well, I, I ended up interviewing Eddie Money years and years ago. That- and uh, we got that based upon because I'd done some uh, local uh, w- with the Blue Goat stuff in Salina. We interviewed every single band that came through town. I didn't care if they were a local band, regional band, national band, whatever. I tried to interview everybody who came through the door. And I sent our YouTube channel one time to the because Eddie Money was going to be performing at some event somewhere, and I wanted to interview Eddie Money, so I sent him the YouTube link. And they're like, you know, you haven't interviewed anybody that's a big deal, but you've interviewed, like, from what from what it looks like, you've interviewed 30 people in one week. Because <laughs> we, were, we were at the Blue Goat every right. night, and they had three bands or four bands every cool. night. And so that's how I got Eddie Money. And so when we started, uh, my buddy Michael Nagy was out there in New Jersey. He started to want to do interviews. And I said, dude, just go interview every single damn person you get your hands on. It's yeah, numbers. I, mean, I tell that to people all the time because you <laughs> need to get to a point where you're comfortable doing an interview. And I think yes. that you don't, that comes from is repetition. Yes. Well, uh, well, Ralph, this has been fun. I, I definitely want to do this again because you are uh, amazing. This has definitely Thank been you. an honor and a privilege. Is that, and... is that Ric Flair on your um on your counter over there? Who I believe so. I believe okay. so. I, uh, I I got is to... it like this over your right shoulder? Is that who I'm looking at? I think so. I've okay. got all sorts of uh, all, all sorts of different things. I've got Bubba the Love Sponge up here somewhere. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm a big radio mark. I'm a big wrestling mark. I'm, I and as my girlfriend likes to say, I'm just a big mark. <laughs> I'm a mark for everything. Like I'm looking at a law book as well. Is that what I see? A big law book? Yes, we. I, I think we uh, just had an interview with him a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. I like. I like. Like it's like a little peering into your life, sir. Yes. <laughs> well, this is good. Well, uh, I definitely want to stay in touch, and uh, I will uh, hit you up on Skype here in just a few. And thanks for doing this. Thanks for coming on, nope. man. Thank you very much for having me, buddy. Thank you, sir. There he goes, Ralph Sutton, and uh, we are going to take a quick time out. When we come back, we're going to be chatting with someone else.